No one wants to learn a program that can't accomplish what they want to do, like making a movie. So let's see if it's possible to make a movie inside Blender. Just like Houdini, Maya, and Cinema 4D, Blender is designed to be versatile in managing different aspects of filmmaking. Anytime you talk about filmmaking and a 3D program, you're either talking about creating a fully animated movie, like The Lion King. Yes, The Lion King was fully animated. None of it was live action. That was marketing BS. Every lion, every bird, every blade of grass, every tree was either modeled or scanned with photogrammetry. That's why you barely see any trees waving in the wind. Adding a wind effect to that many trees would probably cause Disney's computers to blow up like a nuclear explosion. The other time people are talking about 3D applications like Blender in filmmaking is when they plan to integrate CGI or 3D models into live action scenes, like in Top Gun Maverick. Yes, I know Tom Cruise himself said everything was real, no CGI was used in the making of Top Gun 2. But just like Disney's marketing team claimed The Lion King was a live action movie, Tom Cruise saying everything was real and no CGI was used is equally BS. If you watch enough trailers, you'll start to realize that every time they say no CGI was used, you can be pretty sure that CGI was used. Anyway, let's get back to making a movie inside Blender. This time, let's begin with integrating CGI effects into a live action movie, which is the most common use case for 3D applications like Blender. When shooting scenes for your movie that you plan to add CGI elements into, you need to plan ahead. To integrate 3D elements into your shot, you'll need to do something called match moving. This involves matching the real world camera movements with a digital camera so that when the camera moves, the digital elements align perfectly with the live action footage. You can add tracking marks to your shots to help Blender's motion tracking, but nowadays it's not always necessary since Blender's motion tracking is getting better at tracking random features in scenes. You still have to manually select the features you want to track, but there are also add-ons like flax tracks that automate the whole process, making it faster and more efficient. The more tracking points you add, the better the camera match. If you're filming in a place where you can't just buy an assault rifle on your school lunch break to film your movie, Blender offers object tracking. This feature is similar to motion tracking, but instead of tracking the camera movement, Blender tracks the movement of a specific object. You could film a scene with a stick as a stand-in for a gun, and in Blender, you can track that stick and replace it with a CGI gun. You can do the same for other things, like creating a part human, part cyborg character, like in the Blender movie Tears of Steel, or like Bucky as the Winter Soldier in Captain America. While object tracking is great for tracking objects or body parts like heads, arms, or vehicles moving through your scenes, if you want to track organic movements like facial expressions, you'll need something specialized for that. The Face It add-on is perfect for this. It works by recording your face and mapping that information onto a 3D model's face. So whatever you do on your phone camera is translated to the 3D character's face. Mastering these three skills will make you invaluable in filmmaking. Add 3D set extensions to your list and you'll be one of the most important people on any set. Whenever you see movies set in historical eras like The Great Gatsby, with sets that look like the old streets of London or New York, you're probably looking at a set extension. Usually, these are built-up sets where a few cardboard buildings are close to the camera with enough detail to fool the viewer and give actors something to interact with. Then, a large green or blue screen in the background gets replaced with a 3D extension of the city. This is easier than using full green screen backgrounds since reflective surfaces get more accurate reflections and there's less green spill where green light bounces onto actors or objects. If the camera moves, you'll need motion tracking, and if objects transition between the real set and the 3D extension, you'll likely need object tracking to align them with the digital elements. There aren't dedicated tools for set extensions in Blender, but add-ons like Perspective Plotter can help match the perspective and camera angle of a photo for your set extension. 3D scanned models work well for set extensions since they have more detail than modeled objects. Piotr Krinsky offers an incredible collection of scans of abandoned buildings, factories, boats, and more with amazing detail and textures. In set extensions, keeping the real and CGI elements seamless is key. If you have crowds in live action, you should have them in CGI too. Add-ons like procedural crowds help populate scenes, and though it's tough to find an add-on with every costume style, they offer various packs like business and summer. Another solid option is the population add-on, which includes characters with unique animations. 
The challenge with set extensions is making the line between real and CGI invisible. Adding effects like smoke can help. Smoke simulations can be heavy and complex, but smoke cards, like those in the Steam Pack collection, are a great alternative. These are recordings of smoke on a green screen, making them lightweight and quick to render without any simulation setup. As you can see, set extensions aren't just about creating background elements to expand your location. They require multiple layers to work effectively. These layers can be detailed, handmade models, 3D scans, or even AI-generated models. While controversial, AI has become an inescapable tool. The Auto Depth add-on, for example, uses AI to generate 3D backgrounds, which can be perfect for set extensions where detail in the background is needed. With this add-on, you can quickly add elements like shop facades or buildings to the background, giving your set that extra depth and detail. If AI isn't for you, but you don't have time to create background elements like buildings, procedural generators are an even better option. They offer more customization and variety, like the auto building generator, which lets you generate buildings in different styles and levels of detail, from modern skyscrapers to castles to large industrial structures. For more on set extensions, Ian Hubert has some fantastic tutorials and movies that showcase the power of motion tracking, object tracking, and set extensions inside Blender. Cleanup and masking. Set extensions are just one part of filmmaking. When you integrate CGI into live footage, you'll likely need to do some cleanup work too. Cleanup is when you remove objects and elements from your live footage that were there to aid production, but shouldn't appear in the final composition. Things like tracking markers, wires used for stunt work, or unwanted objects like lights, Starbucks cups, and mustaches. Blender has masking features, but unfortunately, there aren't many tutorials covering this topic. The only tutorial I found was about rotoscoping by CG Cookie, which is basically the same thing. Masking and rotoscoping are very important in filmmaking because green screens aren't always the best choice. When adding CGI elements into live footage, like dragons, cars, and other objects, the CGI layer usually sits on top, unless it's a set extension, where the CGI serves as the background. When CGI is in the foreground, sometimes you need the CGI objects to go behind live footage objects, like putting a car or building behind a person, or showing a CGI creature fighting a character, where they're going back and forth. The only way to achieve this is by using masks. Blender may not be the best tool for complex scenes like these. Most artists turn to compositing software like Nuke, which is built with these types of scenes in mind. To make CGI feel more integrated with live action, you can simulate effects between the CGI layer and the live footage. These are typically called visual effects. This can include dust, smoke, fire, bullet hits, blood splashes, and more. Each effect can be complicated to create, but Blender is well suited for this, even without add-ons. My buddies Top Channel One on One and Grant Abbott collaborated on an awesome course covering rigid body dynamics. It's a great starting point if you're interested in effects like destroying buildings, adding dust, fire, and explosions. To expand the effects you can create in Blender, there are add-ons like Flip Fluids, which is a more advanced fluid simulation system than Blender's built-in MantaFlow. Flip Fluids is perfect for creating magic water effects like those from Avatar The Last Airbender, where you need custom forces to morph water into different shapes and behave magically. There's also Fluid Lab, a newer add-on that goes beyond just fluids. You can use it to create sand, viscous fluids, and more. Both Flip Fluids and Fluid Lab tackle fluid simulation, but each has its own strengths and weaknesses, depending on what you're trying to achieve. As you can see, Blender is fully capable of making a movie, but you need to understand its strengths and weaknesses. Some of Blender's limitations are easily resolved with add-ons, others, not so much. This is why Blender isn't widely used in effects-heavy movies like Avengers, because its physics engine hasn't been updated in a while. It's not the most reliable for large-scale VFX. That's where Houdini shines. But most filmmakers aren't trying to make Avengers. They're looking to create collapsing buildings, car crashes, explosions, and more, which can be done with add-ons like RBD Lab, which improves Blender's simulation system for advanced effects like metal deformation, custom forces, and controlled fracturing. If you want to learn more about VFX in Blender, Top Channel One-on-One -on -One has a free Blender course on YouTube with a series of videos showing how to produce special effects used in movies and ads, complete with project files to explore and reverse engineer. There's a lot more to making movies in Blender, but it's, uh, it's impossible to cover it all in just one video. If this is a series you're interested in, 
Let me know in the comments and we'll keep exploring. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.